Doc Talk with Dr. Paul Conley is a production of the Signer Foundation, which is solely responsible for the content. This is Doc Talk with Dr. Paul Conley, brought to you by Plateau Medical Center. Hello, I'm Dr. Paul Conley, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Doc Talk. Today we're here at Plateau Medical Center, and we're going to be talking about colon cancer and colon cancer screening and prevention. Colon cancer is the number two cancer killer in the United States of America. With annually, we have over 50,000 Americans uh, that pass away from colon cancer with nearly 150,000 new cases. We have seen a 30% reduction in colon cancer death in the last 10 years. That reduction has been attributed to colonoscopy and removal of polyps. Polyps are precancerous growths that if left unchecked can turn into colon cancer. Colonoscopy is the preferred screening method. There are other options available, but colonoscopy is preferred. The reason why is because it can not only evaluate the colon and have early detection of colon cancer, but it's the only test available that can actually prevent colon cancer by removal of these growths. Colonoscopy, if normal, is good for 10 years, where other stool-based tests we have to repeat every one year for a fit test or the DNA test we have to do every three years. So in saying that, we're going to show you today a colonoscopy in its entirety here at Plateau Medical Center. So our guest is actually John Siner. So John, I appreciate you so very much uh, for coming in today to have a colonoscopy. This is your first colon cancer screening test. And with you being here, you're going to be able to one, get a quality colonoscopy performed, but also it's going to make a big difference that people can actually see a colonoscopy. So I really appreciate you being here. Thank you, Dr. Connolly. It's, you know, it's time that I had this done. You know, with the history of cancer in our family, uh, screening can't be done early enough. So. You're, you're exactly right. So, so again, you know, we're here today to, to, to make a difference in, in your life as far as identifying any growths that you could have in your colon because polyps, you know, have no symptoms. No one has symptoms of polyps. Um, you know, the worst thing about, you know, the whole test, uh, and I want you to just tell us a little bit about the bowel prep. You, you obviously underwent the bowel prep, the, the, the split dose prep. We did, you know, two doses uh, with that prep. Can you tell me a little bit how you did with that? I tell you, you hear the, the horror stories of it, but I gotta tell you, it wasn't bad. You know, I made the first mix up and I put it in the refrigerator, just chilled for a couple hours. And I took it out and uh, just, I sipped it. I didn't chug it or anything. My only issue mainly with it was just, uh, it just gave a slight aftertaste. But I, I had a mint, couple mints and I was fine. You know, then a couple hours, uh, you had to wait a couple hours. And then uh, I took the second test, you know, the second drink. And uh, like I said, uh, I didn't have any issues with it at all. So, the, you know, the bowel prep has improved, you know, quite a bit. We used to use, uh, you know, a gallon uh, jug of a solution that was, you know, somewhat difficult to drink, uh, had a real salty, foul taste. Uh, so, so the bowel prep has improved. Uh, you know, it's so important that we have a good bowel prep because with you having a good preparation uh, for the colonoscopy, that's what allows us to visualize the entire colon. And some of these pops can be very subtle. And with having a good bowel preparation, which which you did, allows us to examine the entire colon. Again, that's what separates colonoscopy uh, from other screening tests because this is the only test in which we can actually evaluate uh, the length of your colon. So without any further ado, I know that you're ready to get this over with, okay? You've went through the bowel preparation. You know, you had a light dot yesterday. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you back from this area, this is the holding area. We're gonna bring you to our new endoscopy suite that we hear at Plateau and then we're going to actually perform a colonoscopy. So you guys are not going to want to miss this, so stay tuned, and then we're going to be right back. This is Doc Talk with Dr. Paul Conley, brought to you by Plateau Medical Center. This is Doc Talk with Dr. Paul Conley. Hello, I'm Dr. Paul Connolly, host of Doc Talk, and welcome back 
We're now in the endoscopy center here at Plateau Medical Center where you folks are going to be able to witness a colonoscopy. During the procedure, our patient is going to be receiving anesthesia from our nurse anesthetist. Maria is going to be providing sedation throughout the entire procedure. It's a very safe procedure and the patient is going to be sedated and completely monitored during their entire exam during the colonoscopy. What this allows to do is that the patient will have absolutely no sense of the colonoscopy at all, which allows us to take that 15, 20 minute procedure uh, and look for pops. So as we get started, we'll be looking here at the monitor. And one of the things that we do here at our center is we use uh, we use carbon dioxide, which actually reabsorbs much quicker. So some of the older colonoscopies, people would complain about possibly having uh, gas or discomfort. Um, and with some of the newer gases that we use during the procedure, uh, patients don't have uh, the discomfort that you would see uh, in the past. You know, one of the things about uh, colon cancer is the fact that uh, we know that it occurs uh, more commonly in certain age groups. For years, age 50 uh, was when we were recommended to start screening for colon cancer. But now, the United States Preventive Task Force, as well as the American Cancer Society, now recommend that we start screening at the age of 45. If you have family history, you would also want to consider being screened younger. African Americans uh, have a higher incidence of colon cancer and actually colon cancer death. I think we're all aware of Chadwick Boseman, uh, the Black Panther star of Marvel Comics, who unfortunately recently passed away uh, from colon cancer. So what you're seeing on the monitor is you're just seeing some liquid prep. One thing that we can do with the colonoscope is we can actually suction um, some of this uh, liquid prep out. So this is uh, of no problem at all as we can continue to suction this prep as he talked about the bowel prep that he did uh, perform before. So as you can see, we're able to take the colonoscope and we're able to advance this scope through the colon. As we're going through the colon, uh, we're examining uh, for any pops or any growths as we're actually also uh, suctioning uh, and removing some, some residual prep uh, that can be left behind. We also have a water jet here that we can actually irrigate and if there's any stool or any particles that we need to irrigate and flush, we can do that as well. So again, one thing you can see about colonoscopy is that we're able to examine and evaluate the entire colon, um, and you can see uh, the vascularity of the colon. These are all things that we can visualize uh, during the, the procedure. And this, again, is why colonoscopy is considered the gold standard of screen tests, and the American Cancer Society, as well as the United States Preventive Task Force, recommend colonoscopy as the preferred method of screening and our stool-based tests are considered second line. Patients that actually have family history of colon cancer or history of polyps or family history of polyps would not want to undergo a stool-based test because again uh, anyone that has higher risk would want to undergo a structural exam which is what we're uh, performing here today. So what we're doing here is again we're just suctioning a little bit of slick with prep um, so we can get a little better visualization of this colon. Um, we're actually uh, at the end of this colon right now, so you can see how quick and easy um, it is to complete to the end. So this is the cecum. Uh, that little opening right there to the center of the screen, uh, that's where the appendix comes in. Um, some people call this the Mercedes sign. It's a, kind of a, a marker of the cecum. So this is actually at the end of his colon. So we've actually went from the rectum um, in through the colon and the average colon for men is about six feet long. So we've covered about six feet of colon right here. And again, we're just going to continue to suction out a little bit of this liquid stool. But 45 is when now we really start uh, recommending colon cancer screening. Uh, we've looked at uh, cancer diagnoses um, and as we track these, what we have found is there has been an increase in colon cancer in people of ages 40 to 50. And with that increase of diagnoses, the American Cancer Society as well as the United States Preventive Task Force 
has recommended screening at 45. So one thing we just did right here is one thing we can also do with colonoscopy that you can't do with stool-based tests is we're actually in his small intestine. We can actually go all the way up into the small intestine here. And you'll see these little villi as they float around. So people with Crohn's disease, many times we only have uh, diseases of the ileum, which is the small bowel, that we can actually see uh, with colonoscopy. And again, the difference, you see these little villi. These are the structures uh, in the small intestine that allow uh, the absorption of nutrients. And his uh, small bowel looks perfectly normal. Again, we'll see uh, the little villi here as we can change our color and we can actually do a little near focus over here. We can actually look at these villi and these all look very healthy. So his villi are of normal. And we can take a look at the villi here. These finger-like projections as they call them. So as we're coming out of his ileocecal valve, and we're back into this colon again. So as we come out of the colon, this is where we really take our time, everyone here in the room, uh, we really focus on the monitor here. As we're looking in the monitor, we're looking for these precancerous growths. And so again, with the scope, we're kind of looking around the folds. We're looking around for any abnormalities or any growth. We can again take our water jet here and we can actually flush and irrigate as we're looking for any of these precancerous growths. We know that uh, in a lifetime that uh, anywhere between one third and one half of people will develop these precancerous growths in a lifetime. Now fortunately only about 10% of those polyps will actually turn to cancer. But we don't know which ones will and which ones don't. So anytime we see polyps, we automatically remove them. So during the procedure, not only can we identify polyps, but we can actually remove polyps as well. So we're coming out of this colon now. Again, we're taking visualization, we're taking the looks. What you'll notice right here, you'll see this kind of blue tint right here. This is actually where the colon actually abuts up against the, the liver. So this is called the hepatic flexure. And you can see the blue hue here as we're looking as we're coming back. You'll see that his vascularity looks really good. So someone that would have ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, um, you would see inflammation, you would see ulcerations, and again, these are all things that with the colonoscopy allows us to actually visualize uh, the entire colon. So things that are considered alarm features, so where you wouldn't want to wait uh, to age 45 would be if someone has rectal bleeding, uh, someone that has change in stool caliber, uh, change in bowel habits, uh, weight loss or abdominal pain, if you have any of these, uh, you would then also not want to wait until age 45. You would want to talk to your physician uh, and be evaluated. Uh, it, it, I've had patients who have thought they had hemorrhoids and they may have had hemorrhoids, but they also had colon cancer as well. And so it's important to not just assume that rectal bleeding is something as a hemorrhoid because it could be an alarm feature for something more serious, uh, such as colon cancer or uh, colon polyps. So as we continue to come out of his colon here, we're continuing uh, to suction and irrigate as we're examining his colon. And again, his colon actually looks really good. Everything's clear. If he had a polyp here with a, such a complete prep, we most definitely uh, would see this. So our technology has improved so much and the colonoscopy is such a safe uh, procedure. Uh, again, this is one of the reasons why we've had a 30% reduction in colon cancer death over the last 10 years. And again, that has been attributed to colonoscopy with polypectomy because once again, colonoscopy is the test that can actually prevent uh, colon cancer. You can see during the procedure, you know, the patients are uh, very, uh, he's very comfortable. When you'll see right here, here's a very small little pop right here. And Brandy is going to give us a snare. We can actually change uh, the color here. This is uh, called narrowband imaging. And when you look here, we'll take a picture. What you can see is you can see there's a very small flat polyp right here. You can see the change in texture here. So we're going to take a snare. And a snare is actually uh, an instrument that we use 
uh, to remove polyps. And so what we do is we take this snare and we're going to actually snip this polyp off and then we suction it through the scope and actually will go uh, into a trap that we trap the polyp and then it will be sent off for pathology. So we're going to bring the snare out through the end of the scope here. Open your snare. So as Brandy opens the snare, we're actually going to close. We got the polyp there. Go ahead and cut through that, Brandy. She's going to cut through this. Sometimes, uh, especially these young, healthy guys, the tissue is just a little bit tougher, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to complete this, cut through this right there, and then we're going to take that snare out. We're going to suction that piece up. And what you'll see is after we remove this polyp, you'll see just a little bit of a white tissue. That's actually a little bit of just fibrous tissue where we've actually now, this is what the polyp, this is where the polyp was. And we take a little picture again, the polyp's gone. This is, there'll be no bleeding from this. The patient will have no discomfort, but this is how we remove uh, polyps and precancerous growths uh, during the examination. Again, uh, this is something that colonoscopy can do that, you know, stool-based tests can't. Another nice thing about colonoscopy is if you have a normal exam, you get 10 years. You don't have to do any tests, uh, fit tests you have to do every year, or DNA tests, you have to do a DNA test. Uh, every three years. And the problem with the stool-based test is they're not very good at detecting polyps. Uh, in fact, our DNA test can miss up to 50% of polyps. If you look here, one of the things too you'll notice is this whole polyp here. How we can pick these things up is you'll see the vascularity and then you see this blood vessel just kind of halt and stop. And you can see that there's a polyp sitting right on top of this area. We zoom in, you can see it almost has this mosaic pattern or villiform pattern. So the first polyp, uh, we'll label that as sigmoid colon. This polyp is actually at the recto sigmoid junction. This is where the rectum reaches the sigmoid colon. And so Brandy again is going to uh, give me the snare. We're going to use our instrument here and we're going to take the snare. We're going to go through the colonoscope. The snare is going to exit into our field of view. And then she's going to open the snare. See how the snare opens. We're going to get that pop all fitted in there. She's going to close it. We close the snare. We got a good tight snug. She's going to cut through it. There you go. It's cut through it. She's going to take the snare out. We're now going to take this polyp. We can see the polyp here, right? We're going to suction it through. And you can see a nice clean margin right here. Now there's no polyp. So now that is in the specimen container, which also will be sent off uh, for pathology. And finally, at the very end, we can retroflex the scope. The scope is retroflexed in his rectum here. We're looking for any abnormalities in the rectum. Everything looks very good here. That's the scope that you can see here, retroflexed. And that's the procedure. So basically what you folks got to see today is you got to see a complete colonoscopy. We had two polyps that we identified during the procedure. And both these polyps are now removed. The patient came in with two polyps. He's going to go home with none. So we dramatically reduce his risk of colon cancer by removing these polyps. So at this point, I'm going to go and do an operative report where I took all these pictures. We're then going to pro provide an operative report. And then when we come back, we're going to talk with Mr. Siner in recovery. So you're not going to miss this. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back. This is Doc Talk with Dr. Paul Conley, brought to you by Plateau Medical Center. Hello, I'm Dr. Paul Connie, and thanks for coming back uh, to Doc Talk. You folks got to witness a complete colonoscopy here. You got to see two polyps removed during the procedure, and what you got to see is the patient was monitored and adequately sedated throughout the entire exam. So, Mr. Siner, I guess how how do you feel? You just had a colonoscopy. I feel great. I didn't. I don't feel a thing. I mean, I just 
Just, uh, just so, so what were you expecting? I mean, one thing I always like to ask patients, like going into this, um, did you feel that there was some concern about pain or discomfort, or did you even think you even had two pops going into this? Well, actually, I didn't, I didn't think there was anything wrong, um, but that's why we take this test, and, and I'm glad to, to know, I mean, you were telling me that I did, you discovered two? That's exactly right. So, so one of the things, um, you know, I print off these photographs, so every other one of the patients, you know, we do uh, photo documentation, and so as you can see, there's a polyp here, and there's one there, so we're able to show before and after pictures here. So I think, you know, the take-home point, you know, is the fact is that you had no idea that you had two polyps in your colon prior to this procedure, okay? And the good news is that you came in with two polyps, and you're going to go home with no polyps, okay? That's awesome. So, you know, that's a reassurance, you know, Absolutely. that you have is that you went through this test. I know there's a little bit of a bowel preparation and everything, but if you think about, you know, colon cancer and how this one procedure uh, can save your life, and I think, you know, the take-home point is this, again, is why, you know, colonoscopy is the preferred method because there's no other test we have available that can examine the length of the colon, which we got to do today, and actually remove uh, two polyps that otherwise, you know, you wouldn't be able to see. Um, and so in your situation, you know, you talked earlier about, you know, you have family history of, of colon cancer. And so that's all the more reason why you would want to have a colonoscopy over a stool-based test because you're considered, you know, higher risk. And so, uh, you know, one of the things we talked about, you know, even before was the fact that, you know, colon cancer, uh, it is something that we are seeing in younger individuals. And so, therefore, we are now starting screening at age 45. The American Cancer Society, as well as the United States Preventive Task Force, now both of these organizations recommend that we start at age 45. Again, if you have strong family history, first your relative with colon cancer, personal history pops or family history pops, change in stool caliber, change in bowel habits, any signs of rectal bleeding, these are all what we call alarm features. This is someone that you would not want to wait, even to the age of 45, that you would want to talk to your physician and get set up for a colonoscopy prior to even the age of 45. So, you know, one of the things you know, I think people um, are concerned about too is gas and bloating, you know, after the procedure. Do you have any gas, bloating, or anything like that now? No, sir, I feel very comfortable. So would you, is this, you know, before the test and after the test, is this something that you would uh, highly encourage to, to your friends and family to pursue? Absolutely. I highly recommend anybody have this procedure done. It's very little, I mean, very little discomfort. Like the only, the only concern was the, the, the prep, and like I said, then that, that wasn't very bad at all. So, I mean, I'm um, very pleased. Well, here's the good thing about this is, guess what? You can eat anything you want today, because I'm sure you're hungry. You're, you, you have, you know, you have went through, you know, the preparation, which is actually harder than the procedure. So the good thing about this is that you're going to be able to leave here today, and you're going to be able to get uh, something to eat. These two specimens that we removed today, these are sent off. So again, this is where colonoscopy, uh, again, is better than a stool-based test because we actually are able to remove these pops. These will be sent off uh, to the pathologist, and the pathologist will be able to examine these polyps. Now, if these polyps turn out to be a precancerous growth, uh, then that would obviously change your screening interval. If these two small polyps are precancerous, you'll need to come back in five years. That would be the recommendation to repeat your exam. In your situation with your first degree uh, relative with colon cancer being your father, uh, you would want to come back in a shorter interval anyway, so this is not going to really change your screening interval. You would then want to come back in, in five years. Take home message is this, as long as you continue to stay on your screenings, okay, as you're doing right now, um, you're dramatically, this one test today, this one test that you had today has dramatically, dramatically reduced your risk of colon cancer because again, you had two pops going in and now you have no pops coming out. Uh, that's, that's incredible. Like I said, I didn't feel a thing. So, for those of you watching the program, colon cancer, number two cancer killer in the United States, does not have to be. We actually have a test that actually can prevent 
colon cancer, and that's through colonoscopy. You got the witness of colonoscopy uh, performed here today, right here at Plateau Medical Center. Uh, so if you are 45 years of age, if you have any of these symptoms that we talked about and you've not had your colon cancer screening, please consult with your physician so you can be set up uh, for colonoscopy. It very well could save your life. For those of you watching the program, I am Dr. Paul Connolly. You've been watching Doc Talk. Until next time, have a good night. This is Doc Talk with Dr. Paul Conley, brought to you by Plateau Medical Center.